How fast can you travel in Super Mario Odyssey? Sounds simple, sure, but the answer is a bit more complicated than you think. If I was making this video back in 2017 when the game first came out, this would be a completely different story. How fast can Mario roll? Bam, done, video's over, f***ing boring. But over the last four and a half years, players have gotten rather clever with how they move Mario. This question is more interesting than you'd think, so buckle up and enjoy the ride. For the longest time, I've been really curious about this question, but haven't had a good way to approach it. Well, thanks to the Odyssey modding community, we now have access to tools that give us information about Mario's coordinates and other cool stuff like that. Using it, we can run down a street in New Donk City, see where he starts, ends, how long it takes, and then bam, we now know that Mario runs at around 820 units per second. But that doesn't give us any real perspective to how fast Mario would be in the real world, unless we convert it to something that actually makes sense. Well, as it turns out, one unit in the game world is actually equal to one centimeter, so Mario runs at about 8.2 meters per second, or 19 miles per hour. I decided to set up a series of trials. I was going to test all of Mario's basic movement options along with most of the game's captures to see just how fast Mario can go with purely intended game mechanics. The structure for these tiles was pretty simple. I'd repeat a short sequence of movement three times, record Mario's position somewhere near the start, somewhere near the end, calculate the distance, record the time, and then finally calculate a speed using the average of the three trials. At the start of these experiments, I also reached out to the Mario Odyssey glitch hunting community to see if they had any tricks up their sleeve to make Mario move even faster. We'll get back to them later. I started with Mario's standard movement options, and it began to put into perspective how fast Mario actually is. Just by spamming long jumps, Mario can already reach a speed of 26 miles per hour, or 11.6 meters per second. That's fast enough to break the current world record for the 100 meter dash, and puts into perspective how weird the scale of Super Mario Odyssey is. That one unit equals one centimeter scale is based off of Luigi's Balloon World, and how it uses meters to measure distance. So these numbers are accurate, even if they don't feel that way when playing the game. It also reminds us of the important fact that the people in New Donk City are over 8 feet tall. Back to speed, we can find out spamming dives is nearly 25 miles per hour, and rolling can reach speeds of over 37. All of these, however, have been done on a flat surface, so I went to Sand Kingdom, found a big hill, and recorded a few downhill trials with running and rolling. This increased Mario's run speed up to 30 miles per hour and his rolling speed up to 46. That's over 20 meters per second, and it's pretty definitive proof that you can't run from Mario. Captures and things were next on my list, and I quickly found out many of them are just slow. I decided to narrow down the list of captures to things I assumed were pretty fast or would just be interesting to test. Some of the slower captures I found were the Cheap Cheap at 26 miles per hour, Glide on at 39, and Yoshi at 37. When it comes to captures that are obviously fast, the first thing that came to mind was the Bullet Bill. Without using any tricks, this guy is pretty fast, but if you're a speedrunner, you might know that if you stop holding Y after gaining some speed and only shake the controller, you can actually hit higher top speeds with a bullet bill than if you were holding Y the whole time. If I were to guess, this happens because there's a max speed that is set while holding Y, limiting how fast you can go. Using this trick, you can hit a nice 64 miles per hour, or about 28.7 meters per second, making it one of the fastest captures in the game. Now I tested a lot of captures, and even ones that felt fast had trouble comparing. Gushins can only hit 47 miles per hour, Lava Bubbles at 37, and Zippers just barely beat out Bullet Bills at 65 and a half miles per hour. I later did a second test with a Lava Bubble, but this time took advantage of the cannons around Launching Kingdom. You can use these to easily launch yourself from one part of the map to another. I calculated the distance from start to finish and how long it took, and found that they allow Mario to travel at 72 miles per hour. This, however, does not consider all the vertical distance the bubble travels since we're only looking at where we start and end. So chances are we're actually moving quite a bit faster than this, but I doubt it'd be enough to beat the next capture on our list, the Bonsai Bill. These are just bigger bullet bills, and something I've learned about Odyssey is that big stuff moves fast even if it doesn't seem that way. As an example, the dinosaur travels at 48 miles per hour even if the movement doesn't necessarily feel quick or snappy. You're just so big that you're able to traverse a very long stretch of land with little effort. The Bonsai Bill speed clocks in at 104 miles per hour, or about 46 meters per second. It might be surprising to know that this is actually faster than things like the Jaxi and Sand Kingdom, which only hits about 93 miles per hour, but based on what I said earlier, it does make sense. 
The bigger something is, typically the easier it is for it to move quickly. I could only find one capture that moved faster than the bonsai bill, and to no surprise, it's the electrical wires. I opted to use this wire in Bowser's Kingdom for my test and was able to clock in speeds of 160 miles per hour, or about 71 meters per second. That's already as fast as some helicopters, and we aren't even doing anything weird with the game yet. Speaking of weird things though, in Mario Odyssey speedruns, there's a strategy that is frequently referred to as a dram strat. Basically, the way it works is you throw Cappy towards a capture, do something like collect a moon, and then actually perform the capture to travel a short distance very quickly. I sat out to find one of the longest dram strats I could manage and decided this location and luncheon would be the best. After recording some attempts and taking notes of my best ones, I calculated Mario to be able to travel at nearly 200 miles per hour doing the trick in this location. He's only able to maintain this speed over the course of about two thirds of a second, however, but still pretty impressive. As we start to get into tricks that can make Mario travel faster and faster, there's something very simple we've overlooked so far, warping. The only reason I'm including this in the video is because warps are portrayed by Mario entering Cappy and physically moving towards wherever you're warping to. I recorded three warps in three different kingdoms to try and find out which one was fastest, and ultimately determined that this warp in Bowser's Kingdom was the most ridiculous. To travel from the very top of the kingdom back to the Odyssey in about 8.5 seconds, Mario and Cappy would need to be moving at about 475 miles per hour, which is about 212 meters per second. That's pretty insane, but is a very boring answer for the fastest way to travel in Super Mario Odyssey, and fortunately for us, if we get a little weird and start using mechanics in ways they weren't quite intended, we can go even faster. Now, I don't mean glitches quite yet, but if we turn on assist mode, we can access a new tool that'll be very helpful, the assist bubble. In assist mode, if you fall off of the map with more than one health, a bubble will actually bring you back to land. However, this doesn't bring you back to the closest spot on the map, but actually brings you back to the last safe spot where Mario was standing on the ground. The neat thing about this is the time between the bubble appearing and Mario being brought back to land is consistent. So all we need to do is find a spot where we can jump off of the ground and get ridiculously far away. I tried this in Wooded Kingdom using Glidon and was able to hit a speed of 531 miles per hour or 237 meters per second. This wasn't satisfying enough so I tried the same thing in Darker Side as the majority of the level is one massive room. With one single attempt I was able to hit a speed of 884 miles per hour or 395 meters per second. This is fast enough to break the sound barrier. However, I wasn't quite satisfied with that either and wanted to see if I could manage an even faster assist bubble. I went back to Darker Side again, but had more of a method this time. I decided to fly with Glide onto the top of the Bowser painting, stand at the very back of the platform, and started gliding backwards through Darker Side. The idea was that if I did this, I'd be able to have my assist bubble stretch the entire length of Darker Side, plus however much extra it takes for me to hit an invisible wall. This could potentially net me a ton of extra distance because for the first Darker Trial, all I did was fly off into the distance from where I started. After around 30 minutes of failed attempt after failed attempt, I finally managed to get Glidon on the painting platform, travel him all the way back through Darker Side, and hit the level boundary. This was super satisfying, but I had to make sure my theory was right, and this actually got more distance. I was. In this clip, Mario was traveling at about 1,517 miles per hour, or 678 meters per second. Without glitches, I would argue this is about the fastest you can make Mario travel in the game. But that's debatable since you could make the argument that flying on top of the Bowser painting platform with Glidon is a glitch, but honestly, who cares? This set an incredibly high bar for what glitches in Super Mario Odyssey had to be able to beat to actually be faster. But those glitch hunters I mentioned earlier took this idea as a challenge. They had already sent me some glitches that I have to give some honorable mentions to, like Fire Ice Hyperspeed that can hit 107 miles per hour, or Goomba Chain Jumping, which I was able to perform and get a Goomba that traveled as fast as 95 miles per hour, but none of that even came close to what they were experimenting with infinite fall glitches. Falling is something I've avoided talking about for the entirety of this video, and that's because most things in Mario Odyssey have a cap for how fast they can fall. As an example, Mario can fall while ground pounding at about 60 miles per hour or 27 meters per second, but not everything has a cap so low. I mean, it shouldn't even matter, right? It's not like you can fall forever under normal circumstances, so if anything they didn't think to put a realistic cap on, we can take advantage of. 
This first glitch combines a few glitches together to make it possible, the first one being letter out of bounds. This lets us clip some letters together to get them out of their intended boundaries. Next, it was discovered that if you drop a letter below the death plane and unload it, you can use Cappy in two player mode to capture it and slip past the death plane without dying. But this doesn't actually trigger an infinite fall because of something called suckage. Suckage is a term that refers to an area around the map that if Mario leaves, he'll be sucked back towards the map. That's why the clip we showed earlier doesn't exactly fall infinitely. But as it turns out, collecting a moon in an area where suckage occurs will disable suckage. You can't really do that in Metro Kingdom, but it still counts if you're in the suckage area one frame after collecting the moon. Because of that, Relaxmus was able to collect a moon, capture a letter below the map one frame later to disable suckage, and perform an infinite fall with the letter. This infinite fall glitch gains speeds up until reaching 200,000 units per second, which is the equivalent of 2,000 meters per second, or about 4,474 miles per hour. But it doesn't end there. For some reason, when Mario falls after a bubble pops, he gains a lot of speed. We can take advantage of this by clipping out of bounds in the bound bowl area and setting our safe spot in a place that'll cause Mario to fall out of his bubble into a death planeless void. Then we can hop over to a spot that has a death plane to trigger our bubble, causing Mario to be brought back to our safe spot and enter an infinite fall. This fall will seemingly accelerate Mario infinitely at a speed of 108 meters per second. Unfortunately, the acceleration isn't actually infinite and Mario has a speed cap using this glitch. That speed cap is 8 billion units per second. That's 80 million meters per second, 178,954,903 miles per hour, or a bit over one fourth the speed of light. I was, however, hoping to find out that Mario could travel faster than the speed of light in Super Mario Odyssey, but eh, 80 million meters per second is close enough. This is the fastest known way you can travel within Super Mario Odyssey. I'm doubtful we'll find anything faster, as I was told the reason Mario stops at this speed is due to float rounding. Maybe someday we'll figure out a way to convert this vertical speed into horizontal speed, but until then, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. As always, please consider liking and subscribing as I work really hard on these videos. I also want to give a huge shout outs to Relaxmus and Pants for putting in a ton of work to finding those infinite fall glitches I showed off earlier in the video, as well as sending me a set of interesting glitches to test out. I also want to give a huge shout out to the Odyssey glitch hunting community as a whole because there are so many incredible glitch hunters behind finding all of these crazy glitches that exist in Super Mario Odyssey, so a big thank you to that community. As always, if you enjoyed, just thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.